What's up, nerds? All right, so I watched X-Men 97 episode 3, and I have to just say I didn't hate it. <laughs> the only, you know, I have some problems with the show. My biggest problems is they do these storylines that are, are a little bit more, like they're better and they're more complex, and this show just rushes the shit out of them. Like, I honestly feel like, like the trial of Magneto could have been like half a season. And this, this, what they did in this episode, because it was, it was based off of this uh, comic book, and I can't remember the name at all, it's like the, the Tales of Cyclops and Phoenix, I think it was called, or something like that. But it's actually pretty good, and I think it was like 12 issues or whatnot, and they went through it in one 22-minute episode, I'm just like, oh, you guys, this could have been a whole season, you know, I'm like, you could have taken more time, and I know some people are like, well, you only have 22 minutes, and this is only a, a six or eight episode season and everything, but I'm all like, so that's a horrible excuse. I'm like, if you remember the original series, uh, you know, they had the Phoenix saga. And that was like, I believe, a five part saga that they did in the TV show. And then they did the Dark Phoenix saga. And I think that was uh, I think that one was just not as long. I think that was more like three episodes. I can't remember off the top of my head. But there, that is a possibility. So I don't know why this show is trying to rush through all these really great stories in 22 minutes I just don't get it I mean like I'm not mad about it like I'm not all like mm, but at the same time I'm all like there was so many good things they could have done here and I'll explain that when I get to the breakdown but before I get to the breakdown I want to just um I'm going to acknowledge this every single episode from now on because I didn't do it the first episode or first two episodes and daddy regrets it but I want to talk about Morph and his uh, his cameos that he did this this week this episode so he did spiral which I liked that one because I liked his little because he's all like, uh, I, I vote that we call her uh, 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 Jean Doe. And he's like, a hands of who agrees or whatever. And I was like, that's a clever joke. I like that. And then he was uh, Ileana Rasputin, uh, which is uh, magic. And he did both versions. He did the the one where she's like, you know, an X-Men. And then he she he did the one where she's a dark child. Yeah, yeah, where she's a dark child. And because she's like, I, I, if I, I can't remember exactly, but something about like she goes to hell or limbo or whatever it's called or that little dimension she goes to. And then she transforms and she's like a, a bad, like a baddie or whatnot. So I really liked his cameo uh, this week. It was really fun. All right, let's get to this breakdown and I'll explain some stuff while we go along. All right, here we go. The X-Men take in the Jean lookalike, and Beast determines that she is the real Jean. So I liked this. I liked when Jean was all like, I, or or as we know her now, uh, Madeline Pryor, when she was all like, I'm the real Jean. I have these memories, yada, 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 and stuff and everything. And I liked how she, she like moved her powers to, to move the little, uh, the little beaker at it. It's not a beaker, but move it and crush it and like uh, destroy it and everything. And uh, I liked that. It was fun. Mr. Sinister contacts the other Jean and reveals her to be a clone. Sinister asserts his control of the clone Jean and she transforms into the Goblin Queen, taking Nathan with her. So I have to be honest, first things first, I'm not a huge fan of Mr. Sinister. I really don't like it I, I, I as a bad guy. I just don't like him. But at the same time, it's fine. I'm not really like upset, you know, that Sinister is in the show because he was in the 90s show and and everything but i just i just never really cared for him that much i never thought he was a bad villain i just didn't care for him however goblin queen i never really liked goblin queen either either i would have to say i disliked goblin queen in the comic books but I did like, however, this. I did like her transformation. I thought that the animation, the animation for me really goes back and forth. But this scene of her transforming was stellar. I was like, this is this is good animation. I did enjoy it. The Goblin Queen subjects the X-Men to horrific visions before the real Jean awakens and confronts her cloned telepathically. So I did I don't know how I feel about all the visions. I did, okay, so when Morph. Okay, so Morph is obviously, uh, you know, gay or whatnot, and he's into Wolverine, 
which I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with that. My only problem is, is they had Wolverine in the shower, and I was like, how can I watch this with my children? I'm, I'm like, I can't have you have naked people in showers and stuff to, to let my kids watch this stuff. And I know you're gonna be like, oh, you're a prude and everything, but uh, they're very, they're still small, and I need them to stay as innocent as possible. So I don't, I don't think that that was necessary. But at the same time, as an adult, I didn't care. Uh, but I cannot let my children watch that, or I'd have to skip that scene and be like, close your eyes. But all the other, the other um, stuff where, where they're they're going through and they they transfer into hell. I liked that. I thought that was cool. I thought that him transforming into Ileana Rasputin would have been better there. Um, but I did like it. I thought it was very cool how she like used their mind against them and stuff. And I, I thought that was cool because we've seen that in the comic books plenty of times. And it was it was pretty real. Morph leads the X Men to one of the Sinister's laboratories. So um obviously Morph you know being like uh, going to the, the laboratories was uh, super fun. But uh, I did I did like the fight sequence here. I thought it was really cool and everything. Uh, I, I I liked her fighting Magneto, and then she was just like, <clears throat> "Oh, you're using your magneticism against me! How cute!" and everything. And then he like falls to the ground. I'm like, "Oh, Magneto, you just got knocked the fuck out, man!" Where they find him afflicting Nathan with a virus in the hope that it will turn him invulnerable. Okay, so this is from the comic books. And if I remember correctly, I'm trying to pull as much knowledge because I haven't read these in the longest time. Sinister, he does create this virus in Cable to, um, he wants to, I believe he wants to kill Apocalypse by creating this virus. But I think uh, Apocalypse, like, uh, becomes invulnerable to it. I can't remember off the top of my head. I do, I do know that Sinister does want to create this virus or something along the techno virus to kill Apocalypse and everything. And But it doesn't succeed because, you know, it's Apocalypse. Yeah. Jean again telepathically confronts the Goblin Queen, reminding her of all the memories they share, both the good and the bad. Okay, so I have to tell you guys right now, I enjoyed this part a lot, and here's why, okay? Because they showed some things in here that are from the comic books, and Daddy was all for it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so when when when, when she takes Madeline Pryor into the, uh, the memories of her as a child, um, so... She goes in there, and the first thing she shows is Professor X showing up at her house, right? And so then she shows her, okay, so it, when she's running, a, uh, she shows a girl, and I can't remember, I don't know if it was her or whatnot, or if it was another girl, okay? But in the comic books, Jean Grey has a best friend, right? And I'm going to get a little bit into this a little bit, just a tiny bit, okay? So Jean has a best friend, and that best friend, I can't remember her name, please don't ask me, runs into the street and gets hit by a car, and she is dying, right? But Jean Grey, that's when her telekinesis kicks in, right? And she, her friend is dying, and she latches her psyche onto her friend, and, and her friend, as she's dying, Jean is starting to die too. And at that moment, that's when the Phoenix Force feels Jean Grey. And she's all like, oh my god. And, and, and Jean Grey can only hold on to the psyche for just a, like a millisecond. But the Phoenix Force is just like, oh my god, this, this person is so powerful. And they're, 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 not, they're not as powerful as me, because I'm the Phoenix Force. But they're so powerful that they can, they can stop you know, death just for a millisecond. And they're like, I have to find this person. And then the Phoenix Force goes and tries to find Jean Grey. If I remember everything correctly. I can't remember because, again, I haven't read these comic books in years. But if I remember correctly, that's what happened. And I was just like, I was like, that's a good callback for, like, people like me. One thing that she did show her was um, the birth of their son, Nathan, Cable. And... I thought that that was really touching because, you know, uh, you know, as a parent, I'm not a mother, but uh, my wife is. But there's that connection with your child that no one, you won't understand until you have children. And I think that women have a, a special connection with their children because they carry them inside them and they give birth to them and everything. And I think that that's something that unless you do it, you will never, you don't understand that connection. Like me, I have a connection with my children and I love those fuckers to death, but I don't, it's, it's not the same. It's just not the same. 
And I think that, I think you know what I'm talking about. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I loved that they, they, they mentioned that in here. And it was just, it, I thought it was great. It was great. The Goblin Queen snaps out of the Sinister's control and turns against him. But Nathan is left gravely infected by the virus. Okay, so after they confront, uh, you know, Sinister, and I like how they blasted him and he had that green oozy stuff like he did in the original comic books because, uh, you know, um, Cyclops blasts were the only thing that could hurt him. And I liked his, I like his voice. It's like, ah, but it's all like echoey and everything. But... I like how they are, they, they free Nathan, he's all like, no, he's not ready, and he's like, oh, you're done fucked up, and everything, and then they see the virus inside Nathan, and he's infected, and uh, I'm all like, oh, no, you guys did fuck up, because he wasn't, he wasn't ready. The clone gene and Cyclops send Nathan into the future with Bishop in the hope of finding a cure there. Okay, so this part where they, okay, so they decide to send Nathan with Bishop in back into the future to because there's a cure in the future for cable and madeline pride sends a little psychic message and everything and, and cyclops is like i cannot be here for this i am not going to abandon my son like i was abandoned i was just like i feel you dude this is good i feel you i feel you and so he's like i can't be a part of this and then they say, now in the comic books, it's not, it, in the comic books was way better because in the comic books, it's actually Rachel Summers who takes Cable and that's her older brother. But as a baby, she takes him into the future. And I, I, I was like, I was bummed that they didn't do that, but it was fine that they did Bishop and everything because he was there. And like, besides that cool double team up with Storm in the first episode, they, what has Bishop done so far and what could Bishop do? I don't know, but he is, I did like his power up in hell when, when Cyclops blasts him, he was just like, and everything. It was very cool. But so they sent him into the future to get a cure and that's where he's there just fighting apocalypse and everything but uh you know i thought it was touching how she was like just know that i will always love you and then the clone gene leaves the mansion taking on the name madeline pryor so then madeline pryor she decides to leave the mansion which i'm all like yeah because there's like you know twinsies and everything there but one thing she says in there that i'm just like that she, that i was just like uh what and when she goes we don't even know when they switched us and i was like oh my god is this is this marvel uh secret invasion all over again where they they switch roadie roads but then all this stuff happened i'm like ah, what's going on here because we all because in the comic books that's not how it happens in the comic books it was um this madeline Pryor. she was madeline Pryor the whole time she just happened to look like Jean. And they're just all like, hey, uh, who's this chick? Who's this chick? And everything. And then um, her and Scott, they go off and have a life together outside the X-Men. And they, he, they're no longer X-Men or whatnot. So um, if I remember correctly, like, I don't remember all of it. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. I, I got to go back. I got to go back, get the, the comic books out and read this shit. In a bar in Texas, Storm meets Forge, who tells her he can restore her powers. In a barn. Okay, so now this part, first off, Storm has got this classic look that she has in the comic books. And one thing, okay, so one thing that I didn't know was that her losing her powers, I guess, is comic book accurate, which I was just like, was it? I was like, oh, I, I must have not have read that, that portion of the program, but I guess it is, okay? And I still don't like it. I don't care if it's comic books accurate. I just don't like it. I like Storm being in there and being a goddess and everything. But she gets, uh, uh, you know, approached by Forge. And and in the comic books, they totally, like, get it by wow, check, go, wow, wow. They get it on. So I'm curious to see if they have a relationship because... Uh, Nathan was sent in the future where Forge will help him uh, because Forge can create any th machine because he talks. He's like got like a technokinesis or whatever where he can just talk to machines kind of thing. And he can basically build a machine for anything. And uh, but uh, he's he's pretty cool. I like Forge. But uh, so he confronts her and he's all like, you know, I can get your I can get your mutant powers back baby and uh and it's and i'm like that makes sense and everything i don't know if that's what they did in the comic books because i i, I didn't read that comic book so um and now i'm all like man i should go and see if i can find it but i'm not gonna pay like a million dollars for it because maybe i would i don't know new comics suck but that was the end of the episode and i have to just admit i know some people like really don't like 
this show and which is which is fine by me i am not um if if people don't like this show i can understand why i totally get it but i have to tell you right now i don't hate this show i mean there are some things that like i said before it does feel rushed but and i wish they would i wish they would slow it down a little bit and and because the 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 the, the original show had like seasons that had like i think 22 episodes each season it might have been like longer than that season yeah it might have been longer than that but i really wish that they would put more effort into this show in terms of episodes maybe make it a little bit longer i know the original ones were 22 minutes but you could add an extra 10 minutes to each episode i'm not going to mind you're not going to mind but I really, that's my biggest complaint about this show is just they're they are rushing through these complex storylines and they're dumbing them down and making them not, that making them worse. So that's my biggest complaint about it. And But I do, I do like the show. I have to admit, I do like the show. Um, I'm excited to see next week episode. You know what I do wish they would do? And maybe they do do it. I said do do. But I didn't see it on there because I didn't watch the whole freaking the end credits thing, which I love the end credits thing because it's so from the 90s. But I wish they would do next time on X-Men. I'm like, man, I would love it if they did that, you know, because it, it would just be nice. But that is my review and my breakdown of this episode, you guys. I I did like it, even though I really don't care for the Goblin Queen storyline from the comic books. Um, I just wish they, I really wish they would have like done at least like th- two more episodes about this storyline because I really feel like they could have done it like hardcore justice. But uh, yeah. Uh, But tell me, what did you guys think about this episode? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite part? Who was your favorite character? I love Gene. Gene's my favorite character. Uh, But tell me what you guys thought. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know I won't mind if you're my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, X-Men 97 breakdown and review. You guys have a good week. Bye.